everyone, it's Max here, back again with another DIY tutorial. As you can see, we're in a new location. Well, not so new to me, as this is where I've been making most of my DIY projects. Right here, on this table. So you'll be seeing me here from now on. Anyway, in this video, I'll show you how to make a really small pocket-sized RC speedboat made of popsicle sticks and some styrofoam. You heard me right, it's remote control, so you can go forwards, left, right, and even in reverse. What makes this boat so unique is it's two little submersible coreless motors at the bottom of the boat. This thing goes pretty quick for its size. Anyway, without further ado, let's make this. To start with, take a 4mm piece of wooden plank and cut a 7cm section off of it. Split that piece horizontally in half and then put those two pieces together. Trim the sides of these two pieces a bit more so that the bottom becomes just as wide as the receiver. Glue the two together, then take your two 6mm coreless motors and glue them on the bottom like so. Now let's encase them in plastic. Vertically, you're going to want to cut a thin layer of each of these little tubes off so they look something like this. Now you're able to slide them on. Cut off another two pieces from a pen tube, make them slanted like wedges. Once everything's glued, it should look like this. Now make the lower bow part of the boat, consisting of four short sections of popsicle sticks glued together in a curved way. The front part of the boat has been made, next let's make the sides of the boat. So here we have a cheap toy grade 27 MHz receiver. The left and right contacts connect with the right motor and the left motor connects with the forwards and backwards contacts. Let's get soldering. Once you've hooked up the coreless motors to the receiver, it should look something like this. If you want to be able to plug in and unplug your battery so you can charge it, be sure to solder on a female connector. Also, don't forget to add an antenna to the receiver. Snip one of the wires from the female connector and solder on a switch. You don't really have to, but I decided to add a switch to my boat. Hot glue the receiver down into the boat. Super glue the back part on. While adding new pieces to the boat, be sure to seal any little cracks with hot glue. Make the upper part of the boat with a 45 degree slant on each piece that gets glued on. The front pieces should look something like this. On the trapezoidal piece of popsicle stick at the stern of the boat, I decided to cut out a little gap for the switch to stick through, and then super glue the switch from the inside. Now let's make a good looking removable cover for the top of the boat. Make sure the lid or cover has a tight fit. The boat is looking pretty cool so far. Next you're going to make a couple of coreless motor compatible mini boat propellers from tiny plastic gears and the lid of a can.
This is how the propellers should look once they're cut out. You're gonna bend these propellers, one in a clockwise orientation and the other in a counterclockwise orientation. So they're basically opposite to each other. Next, you're gonna wanna super glue these little gears onto the backs of these propellers. Now attach your two propellers onto the coreless motors. And it's important to know that both of these have to be spinning into each other, so the left one spins clockwise and the right one spins counterclockwise. To prevent water from getting into the motors, be sure to rub a bit of petroleum jelly on the exposed parts, and then attach the propellers back on. Next, I did a buoyancy test on my RC boat to see whether it'll float in water, and it was still a little bit too heavy, so I replaced the battery for one that was less than half as long. And then I put the boat back into the container of water to see if anything changed. And now I kind of regret putting the switch at the very rear end of the boat because the water is almost touching it. For now, instead of replacing the switch, I made a little box kind of enclosure around the switch. So now the water shouldn't be able to get in. I then went outside to my pool to see if it'll work in water. And surprisingly enough, it did and it moves pretty quick. But unfortunately, it was collecting quite a bit of water through the back and the sides of the boat after every turn. So I had to use a hair dryer to dry the interior of the boat out. And I had to come up with a plan B in order to make it float better. From a sheet of thick styrofoam, I decided to make a couple of pontoons. One will sit on each side of the RC boat. In my opinion, the boat looks even cooler with the pontoons, and it should help it float a bit better. In the end, I decided to rip the switch out from sitting in the rear end of the boat, as it was a really silly place to put the switch in the boat anyway. We all learn from our mistakes. <laughs> Alright guys, that's about it for this video showing you how to make a really small remote controlled speed boat. So I've been racing this thing for 5 days already and I see no signs of rust on the cordless motors whatsoever. So they've been sealed well and they had a bit of Vaseline put on them as well. So that helped. If you enjoyed this video then be sure to hit that like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to my YouTube channel with the notification bell ticked not to miss any of my upcoming videos. If you want to support my work by making a donation then you can click on the link I've left below this video in the description to my Bitcoin wallet. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace!